King's Fall is a returning raid in Destiny 2 that is free for all players. This complete raid guide moves very fast. Use screenshots, chapters, and playback speed to make it work for you. To prepare, here are three major mechanics in the raid. Plates are circular pieces of floor that are active when stood upon. Plate operators will be referred to as plops. Brands are buffs, unique to each encounter, each with its own name and function. Brand Claimer is a buff that allows players to steal an active brand from other players or enemies. Hall of Souls is the introductory encounter. To prepare, assign two teams, one left, one right. On each team, assign two runners and one gunner. Runner 1, grab hive relics. Runner 2, clear ads and doors for your relic holder. Gunners, stay at the start, opening blight doors and clearing ads. Grab two hive relics and open the blight door to reveal an active statue. Dunk both relics within five seconds of each other. Runners, exit through your side halls to continue. Repeat this five times with each relic set spawning further away. How to fail. Relics have a countdown timer when grabbed. At zero, they respawn. Dropping a relic also causes it to respawn. Proceed until you reach a docked hive tomb ship. Climb aboard, crossing the gap by jumping from ship to ship. Next, have two players stand on glowing plates to lower a force field. Other players board the ship. On the other side, stand on two plates to let the remaining players through. Totems of Annihilation is the first encounter. To prepare, review the map. Assign two teams, one left, one right. On each team, assign two runners and one gunner. Prioritize damage resistance and mobility. Tune loadouts for ad clear, close, and long range. Runners 1. Collect your brand buffs to begin the encounter and run towards your totem. Kill enemies with the brand active to collect stacks of Deathsinger's power. When called, run to the center, passing runner 2. Stand on the plate to deposit power stacks. When clear, follow the runner 2 steps. Runners 2. When the encounter starts, collect brand claimer. Jump off the platform and call runner run to return. Run to your totem, passing runner 1 and taking their brand buff by holding the action button. Repeat this cycle, handing off brands between runners until complete. Gunners, stand on the top corner platforms by the exit door. Kill the wizard to spawn a taken knight. Kill the knight to drop brand claimer for the runners. Repeat this process, killing knights and unstoppable champions below. Once 200 power stacks are deposited, the door will open. How to fail. If a totem is unattended for 10 seconds, the fire team will wipe. Totem rooms slowly damage any players without a brand. When a brand timer reaches zero, the player dies. Players with the power stacks cannot pick up brand claimer. The second encounter is War Priest. To prepare, review the map. Assign three teams, left, right, and mid. On each team, assign one runner and one plop. Tune loadouts for high damage output. Plops, stand on your plates to begin the encounter. Phase 1, clear ads until three orange bar knights have been killed, one for each team. Phase 2, determine the glyph sequence. Middle plop, stand on your plate and look at the back of the large pillars. Call out the glowing pillar, left, right, or mid, and then leave the plate. Plop 1, begin the sequence by standing on the plate near the first glowing pillar. Then, call out the next glowing pillar. Plop 2, do the same. Plop 3, complete the sequence by standing on your plate to receive brand of the initiate. Phase 3 is damage. All players move next to the initiate to damage the boss. During damage, a runner must go kill a blight guard to collect brand claimer. Return to the group and steal the brand just before the timer expires. A second runner will repeat this process, becoming the third initiate. Once this timer expires, hide behind a pillar to avoid a wipe. Repeat all phases until the war priest is dead. How to fail. Breaking the glyph sequence turns plates red, damaging players. Letting the brand of the initiate expire with multiple stacks kills the player and ends the damage phase. After hiding behind a pillar, it is destroyed, limiting the encounter to four damage phases total. Proceed through the cellar, turning right, left, left, then right. Exit straight ahead. The third encounter is Golgoroth. To prepare, assign two runners and four gunners. Runners, tune for ad clear and damage resistance. Gunners, high damage. Shoot the bright poison sack on the ceiling to begin. Clear ads until a new poison sack appears and Golgoroth's back opens. Gunners, break the sack to create a pool of reclaimed light. Stand in this pool and shoot the open crit spot on Golgoroth's front. Another sack will appear. Break it and move into its pool for damage. Repeat this with all six sacks or until the damage phase ends. Runner 1, shoot Golgoroth's open back to receive his gaze. Golgoroth will only face and attack you, so move behind the gunners to ensure he is facing them. Call out when the gaze's timer is low, and Runner 2, shoot Golgoroth's back to take his gaze before the first timer expires. Repeat this process, handing off back and forth until the damage phase ends. Repeat damage phases until Golgoroth is dead. How to fail. Random players in the pools will receive the unstable light debuff. They must leave the pool or they will explode, killing the others. If Golgoroth's gaze is lost before the six sacks are broken, the damage phase ends early. Any unused sacks in a damage phase are counted by glowing runes on a slab. If all six runes light up, Golgoroth will enrage, causing a wipe. The Daughters of Oryx is the fourth encounter. To prepare, review the map. Assign four plops, one for each plate, and two runners. Two loadouts for long-range damage. Attack enemies to begin the encounter. A knight will spawn on a random plate. Plop, kill the knight on your plate and stand on it. A relic with a waypoint will appear high in the air over another plate. Call out that plate's location. That plop will stand on the second plate, spawning a platform bridge between them. Meanwhile, a random player will become torn between dimensions. The torn player ascends the bridge from plate 1 to plate 2 and touches the relic. Plops, get off your plates, and a new player will become torn. Repeat these steps twice. 
On the third bridge run, the Torn player must pick up the relic to receive Brand Claimer. Use the Claimer on the attacking daughter to gain their Brand. Any players within the Brand's aura are invulnerable. All players meet in the middle, dealing damage until the phase ends. Repeat this process, alternating damage between the daughters until they die. How to fail. If a plop is torn between dimensions while their plate is active, runners must cover their plate until they return. The Dirge and Him debuff timers will kill players not protected by the Brand. Standing on the wrong plates causes damage. Leaving an active plate removes the bridge platforms. And if one daughter is killed, the next daughter must be killed in the next damage phase or the fire team will wipe. Oryx is the final encounter. Approach the light to begin. Phase 1. Kill the Taken Knights on each plate. Oryx will slam his fist on a random plate, beginning the bridge process again. Repeat that three times until a player has Brand Claimer. Meanwhile, four Light Eater Ogres emerge, one by each plate. Kill them to drop their Blight Bombs. Kill four Light Eater Knights right after or they will consume the bombs. Phase 2. The Claimer must steal the Immortality Brand from the Vessel of Oryx Knight in the center of the map. When the Oryx calls upon the Darkness, stand next to all bombs to detonate them. Confirm these actions by reading the action feed on the left. Meet in the middle inside the Immortality Brand's aura. The bombs will detonate, stunning Oryx. Each bomb detonated adds to the duration of the damage phase. Phase 3. Damage Oryx's open chest until it closes. Phase 4. One of two random things will happen. Either players are teleported one by one into an arena where they must kill a shade of Oryx, or explosions will trigger on each player until knights on each plate are killed. Complete the random challenge and repeat all phases until until final stand. Phase 5. Oryx moves to front mid. Two Light Eater Ogres spawn by L2 and R2. Kill the Ogres and detonate their bombs when Oryx calls upon the darkness, then kill the Taken King. How to fail. Bomb detonations will kill players outside of the brand's aura. Failing to reach the damage phase quickly will cause a wipe. Failure to kill Oryx during final stand will cause a wipe. That's your quick guide to King's Fall and Destiny 2. If these fast end game guides are helpful, spread the word. We'll see you next time. Get raiding, Guardians.